Hi, everybody. Getting things set up. So, no rush. What is time? All right, I'm getting a few things all squared away. And, ooh, what an interesting shift, huh, in all of our uh, weather <laughs> right now. It's uh, reminding us that Mother Nature is in charge. Actually, most anybody who knows the practice with me, I like to feel nice and cozy. I don't like to feel uh, uh, tight at all. Aw, Andrea, how sweet of you. Um, yeah, so, actually, you know, you brought up a really good point, Andrea. I, I do like that, um, the pandemic has created like some innovations and creativity, some go with the flow, and uh, I think that we'll be keeping uh, doing this. This is a, a great way to make it accessible, make us a little less um, beholden to schedules because we can make things happen, uh, uh, we can make our practice happen at any time, you know, we can carry it with us. All right. Okay, peeps. I am looking to see who else is here. Anybody have any uh, requests while I can actually still see the computer screen because I'm going to start to go away uh, from the computer screen and onto my mat and into here, uh, which I hope that all of you do too, right? You can't sit and write comments. Hopefully not while doing your yoga. That wouldn't be like that focus element, that dharana. All right, so I'm watching to see what we got here. Anyone else? Uh, hey, Kim. Good to see you. And how about I mute myself? Uh, all right. So I'm going to back it up. and say good morning, kind of officially. Oh, it's good to sit down on the mat and tune out in order to tune in, right? I, I really don't like the thought of going into our yogic practice or our meditation practice as escapism. Um, but instead for uh, some reality and tuning in for truthism as opposed to escapism. But it, it really is nice to just even the act of setting down with the intention of coming into our practice starts to bring in that focus, right? We sharpen our lens in to this space, me on the butt, in the clothes I'm in and the breath I'm in right here. Ah, so good morning everybody. I'm Belinda and I am Just Be Yoga. Hopefully finding a way of just being within ourselves and being a just being. What is being a just being? What does justness 
feel like in my actions and in my behaviors, my thoughts, my intentions. So welcome to our yoga, home yoga practice. I've been sharing this practice now almost since the very beginning of the stay at home uh, uh, order from Governor Whitmer here in Michigan. And my intention with that was to say, well, what the heck, everybody's home more or less. Uh, how are we all developing our home practice? Uh, taking away this thought that we have to go somewhere else. Again, truthism coming within. So just a bit of a recap that yoga means to create a connection, yoking, coming together. There are eight limbs of yoga. The first is uh, our moral behaviors uh, with others in the world. Uh, second is how we treat ourselves and how we behave within ourselves. Asana, uh, yoga poses, that's what most people really understand yoga as, is all of the twisting and bending and stretching. Breath, breath practices and our awareness of our breath, and there are so many exercises for us to bring in that awareness and to exercise our breath. Prachahara, and that means sense withdrawal. I also like to think of it as sense awareness and amplification. So how aware am I about where I am in my sense of sight? How does my sense of sight drive my behavior, right? I see something, suddenly I want it. Uh, I see something, I'm having a squirrel moment. My uh, taste, smell, huge reactivity around smell, right? Olfactory sense wakes us up. So when we start to create practices that are without our sight or without a sense of smell or without hearing, it really helps us bring in to the next one, focus, dharma, single-minded focus. You know, once we start to eliminate some of those senses, woo, it heightens other things bringing in that focus. Dhyana, meditation. Uh, and I like to think of meditation uh, separate from focusing. And uh, focusing lets us keep our attention on one thing. Some of you have heard me say, you know, it's like puppy bowl. And so you've got a room full of puppies and you get to look at one puppy. So you're just looking at the dachshund who's chasing his tail and the rest of those puppies, the St. Bernards and everybody are running all around. But all you see is the dachshund. But meditation gets to be I'm going to sit in peace and all of the puppies are running around and I'm still in my peace, right? You got puppies stomping in poop, you got puppies pulling on each other's ears, you got puppies sleeping in the middle of the pile and it's all going on crazy and yet we find our stillness and our steadiness amidst the puppy bowl. That's meditation. Hard shit, right? And then the last is samadhi or that unification. Um, being within all of those spaces at ease and at one and at peace. Yeah, that's this journey. All right. And if that means that our portal of entering it is in our skin, great. That's all right. All right. So I'm glad to be on my mat. Had a little bit of yoga 101. So chew on that for a moment. How I treat others, how I'm treating myself, how I'm treating my body. Ooh. How I'm treating my breath with my awareness. Where am I in my senses? Where have I been lately in my senses? Focus. Where's my attention been? And then where have I let my attention just disperse and find that oneness, that solitude, that peace, serenity within? So I'm going to feel my body, feel my skin wrapped around my body, feel my breath. What does that even mean, feel my breath? Am I noticing uh, where I can feel it, the temperature of feeling it, the texture of feeling it? inside me, outside of me. It's a good time to check in on my senses. What can I see? Let my eyelids remain open. 
and notice different shades of lighting. Notice my sense of smell and taste. Where on my tongue can I taste? How is taste and smell related right now? Feel my actual ears. Can I be aware of my ear canal? What's the closest sound? What's the farthest sound? Trying not to identify the sound, just hearing my ears hear. my sense of touch. So much touch, so much fabric wrapped around so many areas of our body. The weight of our body on pressure points, feeling touch inside of my body, feeling touch outside of my body. So complex. And where am I in those spaces? Can I give them my attention? How does it help me come and connect with a truth? I wanted to hear some sound this morning. Some sound for the sake of sound and vibration. Start to notice how often you're having sound and paying attention to nuance of sound with no other purpose than to be present with hearing and receiving the vibration of sound. Not a song and lyric. Not a news program that's delivering information. Listening to water out of your faucet. Listening to the hum of your own furnace. Hearing the sound of our own breath. Being present with the occurrence of vibration. Feeling that vibration permeate our own being. So if you're joining sitting, you can be sitting on a chair, you can be sitting on the floor, you can be sitting cross-legged, you can be sitting on a pillow, your legs could be out in front of you. So start to create that connection with your own physical body of how does it wish to be in its greatest ease. I'm going to feel my spine and sit up tall in my spine and try to eliminate any restriction in the lifting of my spine and digest that. What does that mean? Am I tightening my tummy? Could I relax my tummy and still engage in the muscles of my spine to sit up tall? What does it feel like to just sit and be present with myself intending to sit up tall? What does sitting up tall feel like and where does it make my mind go? If I can't sit in ease with this simple space, how could I expect to sit in ease in a more complex way 
of positioning my body, aka yoga pose. Slowly and mindfully, gently tilt the chin up and down and observe what you observe. From the shoulders, the neck, how far down in the spine. Being present in those senses, pratyahara. I love feeling and building the awareness of skin and tension of skin, moving. I can actually feel skin moving down in between my shoulder blades. Not just the muscles, the skin. And then eventually neck rotation. Now really starting to observe, can I be aware of my bones? Is there sensation in my bones or am I just feeling the flesh around the bone? I know I can definitely hear crunching, and I'm hoping that isn't bone on bone. I feel as though it's probably tendons and ligaments. Maybe there's some calcification. My body has been on this earth and subjected to gravity and impact and collision and all sorts of movement for a half a century. There has to be some calcification. <laughs> Change direction. Oh. And then just start to notice, where's my mind as I'm doing this? Am I observing? Did my mind start to run off somewhere? And it's really common. My mind is still remembering that little ha-ha moment I just had. And I bring it back. My mind is starting to wander into, hmm, where should we go in this practice? And then I bring it back and say, just try to be as authentic as you can and practice your practice, Belinda, and sharing that will be good enough. Eventually letting my head fall over to the left side, allowing my left hand to come up by the right ear and breath. Letting the weight of this right arm fall. And asking myself, is there a depth and nuance of this movement or of the non-movement that I can appreciate and sit and be present with? And instead of the word focus, let awareness or attention be the word. What is my awareness letting me see right now? Where is my attention? Could I let something go in the right side of this neck? What's still clenching? And there's a lot that's still clenching because as I soften in, I start to feel a little squishy emotional space. And so it's letting me know that emotionally I'm really clinging on. Right? My interaction has been through screens, been through cameras. Maybe a little bit of audio in a phone. I've been waving at random strangers. Sometimes they wave back. But other times, still, still, even in this time of this pandemic, people are like, why is that lady waving at me? We can't just greet one another just for the sake of saying hi. We're beings on the planet enjoying this breath, and I'm really glad to see you. I think it makes me a little sad. I'll release that arm, chin down, oh, feeling that neck space release, coming over to the other side, right hand up by the left ear. Whew, I don't even know if I'm ready to feel what's on this side, if I'm already in this squishy emotional space. Even embracing the vulnerability of sharing that, just to be able to share, wow, there's some emotion in here that's feeling a little trapped. And it's grateful for this release. Breath in, breath out. 
So the space of the first limb, the yamas, that's that first limb. Non-harming, non-stealing, truthfulness or non-lying. So I practice a little truthfulness right there with you all. Non-hoarding, non-restraint, I'm sorry, actual restraint. <laughs> yes, actual restraint. <laughs> And non horny breath. And then chin down. I'm going to bring both of my hands down behind my head. I'm going to change my leg positioning. And let my arms rest here and just feel the back of the neck. What else is still trapped in my communication space? In my shoulders, in my neck, rounding my spine. And I'm gonna, I really feel like just feeling my breath here. Expanding my belly. Letting the back of my spine slowly release. Letting my attention focus on what's still tight here. Oh, there comes another wave of some feels. Finding ways to be gentle with myself and releasing my arms, lifting the chest up, gentle shoulder rotations. I don't know about you guys, but I do have a, quite a few emotional yoga practices where it's like, well, here comes another wave. And I don't even try to analyze anymore. It's just like, oh yeah, of course my emotions live in my body. So if I move my body, that means that I move my emotions. Taking my left arm across, feeling the back of that shoulder, and just gently twisting. I'm not going to go very far right now because it feels like uh, just um, even the slightest movements can let like that onion peel. So I'm okay with that, and I just want to breathe and feel and go, what is going on here? I don't know if I would have actually been able to be this open and raw in person. Whew. Breath in. Breath out. I'm going to release that arm and then just move this arm around in circles. Awareness of range, driving from that elbow, changing direction. Reaching my arms out, working my wrists, changing direction really like to flare the fingers out here. And then I'll find the other side, hooking under it. I could just hold this shoulder, sitting up, holding my own spine upright. That's all, nothing extreme, and a gentle twist. Breath in, breath out. Why do we return to our mat? Why do we wish to practice these eight limbs? Being aware of how I treat others, how I treat myself, how I treat and live inside of this physical body, what I do toward its welfare so that it can carry my spirit, how I treat my breath, where I am in living in my senses, am I indulging in them? Am I in a balanced space in them? And release, gently rotating. Where do I put my focus? We're blessed with consciousness, right? Sentience. So what do we do with that attention? And if we have the ability of bringing our awareness and intention to single points, can we also disperse it and be at ease and 
and be present with everything we're aware of and not be rocked, change direction. And there we go, oh, I could use some of that, especially in this time of the pandemic. Don't sit and worry about, oh, how much time I could have been doing this before the pandemic. No, be grateful for the moment and where we are, reaching those arms out. Ah. Rotating it from the upper arm and the armpits. What's that range? Am I still growing tall in my spine? What responds? I love to feel the space in between my ribs and see if I can use my imagination brain to connect with those muscles and say, could they move? Can I make them move? Ah. I'm bringing my hands behind my back, maybe holding a strap, lifting the arms, opening my chest, letting my heart be exposed and still growing tall. Oftentimes we just rush to go into a back bend here. Can I still sit, still sit up tall? And sit up tall, this exposed in my heart, this exposed in my belly. What am I willing to shine and expose and bear open and true? Or what's really scary about this right now, and maybe you want to let go and do let go if you need. Neck rotations if you like. That sounds like a good idea for me. I'm noticing that my communication space really has some stuff to tell me. Not about me speaking outward, but remembering that my fifth chakra, that throat space, is about listening. Am I listening in my truth? And then release. Truth requires bravery. A lot of bravery. And I'll lengthen my legs out. I'll wake those legs up. Feels like that upper body has gotten some stimulation coming down now into my hips. Maybe clear out your fleshy bits, pointing and flexing in the toes and heels, ankle rotations. Here, I'll back it up. Ankle rotations. Ah, working my hips in, out, still sitting up tall. Good. Tilting the tailbone. I'm just waking up, living in my body, feeling different body parts responding. And then what's the range, what's the nuance in those hips, in that pelvic area? Good. I'm going to lift up with a nice deep breath and then let my upper body go. Lightly bend the knees. Fill up my low belly and my low back. Notice what's still clinging, what's still being tense, what's tense in my body, tense in my breath, what's tense in my mind. Am I here or am I somewhere else in my mind? If I've chosen to be here, can I be here? Gradually rolling my spine up. <clears throat> I'm going to turn sideways. And I can rest on my hands behind me and walk these feet in. Well, widening my feet just a little. I'm just going to let my knees go side to side, side to side. And I'm feeling the sides of my thighs, the front of my hip area here and all the way down. Mm, noticing areas of my spine responding. Maybe they're still tensing. I'm going to roll over to one side and let one ankle, so I've turned over to my right and I'm letting my right ankle come above that knee 
and I'm going to breathe. Now, those knees, especially if we've had knee replacements or any knee issues, that may not feel good. You don't have to do that. You can be here. That leg doesn't have to be very far. Respect what your body is saying. This is not a no pain, no gain. That is not a non-harming thought, an ahimsa thought, right? That's not accepting ourselves where we are. And let's come on over to the other side. So I want to respect those old injuries. I want to respect those new injuries. Maybe you bring that ankle over here. And then if it feels good, feel, let it feel good. Lean into it. Sometimes the simplest things, and it feels good, and we feel weird about it. We're like, ooh, should I let anybody know I really liked that? You, can, you don't have to share it, but admit it to yourself. Hell yeah, that was yummy. I'm living in a physical body. Relax and come on back. I can enjoy being in this body. I've got it, right? I'm going to reach those legs out in front of me, lifting up, and take it forward. Relaxing the belly. Those knees could be bent. You could always roll up a towel or a blanket under those knees if you don't want to jam it all the way down. So if you feel like the backs of the legs are super tight. How do we express some respect and some love? Breath in. Breath out. What else could I let go of here? I'm even going to stop flexing the toes. Breaking some yoga rules, I know. Breath in. Breath out. Relax your jaw. My eyebrows, my forehead. And come on up. It feels like acceptance is really where I need to be in my practice today. So I'm going to try to roll with that, accepting what is, not trying to get anywhere, accepting where I am in the skin I'm in. I'm going to bend this right leg, wrapping this right arm around this knee, and bringing my hand back here for a little support and leverage, right? That helps me root and anchor. If you need, you could always bring a block back here in case you're not reaching the floor maybe not leaning so much, seeing if we can lift up. Now, if you want to widen that out, that's fine. Maybe move some tummy flesh out of the way. We'll breathe in, lifting up. Exhale, twisting my rib cage, my belly button. Now, I'm not going to wrench anymore. I'm just going to hold right here where I am. And just breathe and relax the tummy, relax my abdomen, my gut. I don't need my gut to be so ready, so braced. Right here, I can let my gut relax and I can start to trust what's inside of my gut. Maybe on the next exhale I'll notice maybe something else is moving. Notice a different area of my body. Notice still if my mind is kind of busy. Hmm, and then relax, release. I'm going to let that knee fall open. If that hip is sensitive, you could always bring a block or a pillow under that knee. Some of us, that knee opens out and is quite comfy, all right? So choose where you'd like to be with that. Lifting up in the chest. Hmm, feeling like I'd like to twist in the other direction here, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to intentionally lift up through the back of my neck, aspiring upward to fade. Oh, acknowledging I'm not in control, but I'm actually going to reach upward toward the heavens because I believe. I believe that there is some balance and some love and some light in the world and it helps me let go of what's heavy. And then I'm going to bring my upper body up and over this leg. 
I'm not reaching for that leg. You're just letting my arms go. Acceptance. Sending a soft thought to any tight muscles. Breath in. Breath out. Breath in. Breath out. Maybe you need to sit up a little higher. Breath in. Breath out. And bring ourselves back up. I'm going to switch that out. Bringing the right leg forward, left leg in, maybe widening my stance, letting my tummy find some space, wrapping this left arm around that right, sorry, my right arm around my left knee. Got some support, investing in my support. Breath in, lifting the chest, and then exhale as we revolve and twist the low spine. No struggle, no fight. Not here to fight. Not here to prove. Sitting with my truth. Being present with what is going on right now in my physical body. Inviting myself to make it easier somewhere. And you can stay in that for a little bit longer if you like. Everybody can find their way. But if you're moving on, I'm dropping that left knee open on this side, sitting up tall. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, my spine would have reminded me here. Twisting, revolving chest up. Face is soft. How does my body reflect acceptance right now? Can I wear acceptance in my neck and throat? Accepting all of the imperfection. Accepting all that is joyous and wonderful and yummy right now. Balance. And letting myself come over this leg. Remember, you could drape a pillow or something here. And some of you just fold on over. I'm going to relax the back of this leg. So maybe you're wondering, Hey, how come we're not moving super duper fast here? How many more poses are we going to do because we haven't done a lot? First, just start to look at your mind and say, can I just generate acceptance of what is? Maybe look at that hungry craving to be somewhere else, to be doing something else. And then remember that I am sharing, developing a home yoga practice. So my practice, what my body is asking me to do, what it needs, what my breath is asking me to do, and what it needs for me to yoke within me. And hopefully by sharing how I do that and how it's different day to day, maybe it will start to help all of us find our own personal home yoga practice. And I'll bring the bottoms of my feet together. And I'm just going to massage first. Building that awareness of my physical body. 
Whoa. Letting this be an attention space, dharana. Right? That sixth limb of yoga. Whoa. Noticing the sensations. Wow. I'm using my thumbs a little, hitting a few pressure points up and down in those calves and going, whoo. What's going on in there? My body's saying, yeah, I've been screaming at you. <laughs> oh, interlace, press the inner thighs open. Noticing the nuance in the groin. And then how much length oh, can I lift up in the chest? Breath in, lift the chin, stretch that skin, that organ of the skin. And then round the spine. Breathe in and lift. Can I stretch more skin? Not just my muscles, my skin. And then, oh, round. Feels yummy. And then I'll breathe in, lift. And I'm ready to come forward. Maybe you need a few more of those cat and cows. Hmm, maybe you're having fun with some family members and just moaning and groaning together. Karma just left me. I think she's a little sick of yoga now. Breath in. For those who don't know, Karma's my dog. My dog friend. She lives with me. She's a roommate. With friend benefits. She pays no rent, but she's my friend. I pay for all the food. And she still remains my friend. <laughs> and we'll roll our spine up. Hmm. All right. I'm going to find a Marichyasana space that's a B, okay? We did the, the A, and that's here, and twisting. So you might want a, a, a strap. I was going to say a block, but a strap. Now for here, we really do want to make our space wide, okay? Because I want my upper body be able to maybe slide inside of this thigh. All right, and I'm just going to use this hand for leverage and I'm going to come forward. And some of you might be feeling a stretch in your back, maybe in the groin here. Mm. And then maybe all we're feeling is smush and that's, that's legit too. But we get to look at our mind and notice what is the mind saying in the smush? Is it saying something loving and kind? I'm going to reach this arm forward. So for me, this is my right leg and my right arm. I'm going to reach forward and turn from the upper arm and just feel that rotation in the shoulder joint. And I'm going to reach forward, keep turning that palm back. Now I'll just ask the elbow to bend. And then let it just stay wherever it goes. Don't even think like, where should I be? My body doesn't look like these. And that's fine. Heck, I'm looking at my body going, no, I don't know. It's not a good look. <laughs> um, but I'm comfy, kind of cozy. I'm going to rock here back and forth. Now is when you might want to have that strap in the other hand. And you can take this strap and whip it back and see if you can grab it with your right hand. And then sit up tall. Now some of you don't need the strap and you could bring your hands together. Here, let's see if I can do some creative wiggling. There, I did some creative wiggling. <laughs> and sit upright. How much breath could this container take in? It's the same container, it's just in a different shape. This body container. Breath in. Breath out. What am I capable of doing in my breath right here? What's possible? How much ease is possible right here? Or is it bullshit that I could find some ease right here? Now, if your body and mind instantly said ding, ding, ding right there, the bullshit, let go. 
Let go. But if you're like, huh, I guess I'm all right. I'm still here. Feels all right. Good. Let's sit up and twist maybe a little to your left. Maybe that's where the bullshit bringer happened. Breath in. Don't even tense too much in your hands. Breath out. Acceptance. Could my heart space and chest space accept this a little bit more? What's authentic? What's true here? I'm going to let those arms go. Ah, shake those arms. Rotate the arms. Ooh. Coming out of that space. Good. And let's make a bear hug then. Whatever arm you want under or over, and then you remember. And so the next time you do it, you switch on your own. And then a little twisting, twisting. Oh. Breath. Elbows up maybe, feeling those joints. What's possible? What's possible for me to release? What's possible for me to feel? Ooh. All right, I'm going to get ready for the other side. Mari Chiasana B. I'm going to open up those hips a little bit. And this is fine for us to just stay here, right? So if that, you know, that bind, that wrapping the arm craziness is like, nah, not going there. If that bullshit bringer hit, just stay here. Or just stay here without whipping it around. We're all going to feel what we're feeling. So right now I'm just feeling out this hip on this side. Yeah, and it's, it's a little tight. Shoulders back. Finding our breath. Noticing my urge to do more. And that's kind of hard, right? Because I'm like, oh, they see me. I have to do this well. Blah, blah, blah. Bullshit, bullshit, right? And so then it helps me confront the noise in my own mind. Because I'm not on display. I'm just sharing my practice. And that's what I try to remember. Rotate here. Bringing it around. That all I'm doing is sharing my practicing of yoga with you. If that helps you find a way of practicing yoga that fits you. And yours is going to look different than mine. But hopefully yours is going to help you shine your authentic self. Just as I'm trying to shine mine. Alright, maybe a whippy whippy with this hand to whip it around and catch. Hey, I need a strap on this side. That right shoulder is a little, little tense. So I'm going to take this strap, whip it around, ah, and sit up. Woo! Rooting my sit bones down. Can I lift from my neck? Maybe work the neck. Start to notice what I feel when I do that. When we do slow down, instead of a rip and run and go yoga practice, we get to really get into some fine spaces and notice subtleties. And maybe some of us are like, I hate subtleties. I can't slow down that much. All right, then go to a faster one. You could come on Saturday for the power if that's your jam. I remember all I'm doing is showing my home practice, sitting up tall and revolving. If all I did was go, 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 I would rip everything apart. So I do have to find balance in my practicing of my yoga. Balance in my body, balance in my breath, in my meditation practices. What's changing right now? Really feeling it on the whole left side of my spine right here. And I'm going to let that go. Woo, right? Working those arms. Maybe swimming them. 
All right, remember switching those arms. Ooh, lifting, because that's what it called for right there. If you want to just twist, twist. So there's twisting, there's lengthening, there's folding, there's standing, there's reclining, there's rotating, there's opening and closing. So as we start to explore, well, if I don't know how I want to move in my body, those are our options. <laughs> Lengthening, twisting, um, folding, bending, reclining, standing, inverting. And that sounds like a really good idea. All right, I'm gonna come to hands and knees. So I really haven't let these arms and legs do any weight bearing, right? It's been all butt bearing. We've been sitting on our butt. So now I'm gonna let my arms and my knees feel out some weight bearing. Shifting forward and back. I'm gonna tuck the toes and lengthen my butt up by straightening my legs, pushing my butt to the ceiling toward the ceiling, letting my head go. I'm gonna walk my legs back. You can do what you want here. Guess what? You can do what you want. You can walk your feet back or forward. I wanna walk it back. Coming onto my tippy toes and pressing the heels back. Coming up onto my tippy toes and pressing my heels back. My friend Kathy likes to do that in her practice and I realize how much I miss doing that but I've had the, the honor of being in a room lately, so I'm just like, oh yeah, that feels really good on the toes, the heels, tilting the tailbone up and down, letting your head hang, spreading the palms wide as a nice base. Now come down to hands and knees anytime that you wish. My body is asking to hold here. I'm going to try to soften my armpits. Soak in those words. And then see about embodying that. What the hell does that mean, soften my armpits? Softening my neck, feeling the weight of my head. Invite that upside down space. And bringing those knees down. I'm going to roll up to standing on my knees. I'm going to bring my hands behind my head and feel those hips coming forward. I'm pulling up gently through the hand so I feel a little length in my neck. I'm gripping my buttocks and my groin. Still that sensation of being so vulnerable and open. Feeling my body wobble and adjust to gravity just to hold upright. Softening my shoulder blades. Hips forward, lifting the belly button up. So if you're starting to feel your low back crunch or pinch at all, come out of this, sit back and down. Take a rest. Oh, bringing myself back. I'm gonna let my body weight sink back and stretch out the tops of my feet. For some of us, those feet don't like that that much. So feel free to just rest, wait. Maybe go to child's pose or go to another down dog. I feel like stretching that out. This is contraindicated though for a lot of ankle space, knee space, hands back behind me. And I want to stretch out my quads, my hips, 
and my collarbones. Notice I'm rotating collarbones and the shoulder sockets. I'm going to roll the shoulders back, thrusting that chest up. Breath. Not dropping my head back and protecting my neck. No strain in the neck. Let the tummy breathe. Oh, yeah. The body felt like it really needed that. I'm going to find another downward facing dog. Maybe shake out the wrists. Now, if you're feeling like, I hate down dog, right? Try not to dig the wrists down this way. Press the palms down this way, okay? And then as though I'm sliding forward, not gouging into the wrists of the palms, palms of the heels of the palms. Press it as though you could slide, but have that grip, but keep that energy as though you're sliding forward. And up. So now I'm pulling the shoulders up and back. All of the energy is going upward, not downward. Maybe see about wrapping your head around that. Heard a, a great teacher, oh my God, it must be a good 10 years ago, but they used the term. Can you imagine your arms are like straws and you're sucking energy up from the earth? Letting my ribs breathe. Squeezing the muscles in my arms, but softening my shoulders, letting my head go. And bring it down for child's posture. Knees can be wide, maybe blankets under your knees. Sinking your hips back. Your head can rest on the forehead, maybe turning it to the side like I am now. Oh, letting your body weight sink. up. I'm going to find a comfortable way of sitting. Maybe sit with your back against the wall and give yourself support. Maybe there's something in you that says, "Ooh, I need so much more. And please continue to practice. Um, I'm going to let myself sit in a space of quietude and meditation after having moved so much of my body and feel present in this truth of this moment with so much awakened and stimulated within me, cleansed and purged. Paying attention to my countenance, lifting my spine, and rooting through the sit bones. Breathing up and down my spinal column, connecting earth to heaven, and bringing heaven down into my earth. Understanding the truth of this moment. I am an organic, warm-blooded species. I am blessed with consciousness and awareness. I am blessed with this breath and I'm giving it my attention. I am aware and present with the source of life within me at this moment.
I am living. I am being. Conscious and aware. I am not my thoughts. I am pure awareness. I am not my titles of a woman, of a sister, of a daughter, of a friend, a teacher. I am awareness. I am not my achievements. Karma has come to join us for the close of practice. That's it. And hands to my heart center, feeling the breath of another being up against me, grateful for life, grateful for love, and connection, yoking with others, sharing my practice. Thank you for allowing me to share it with you. All that is love and light and kindness within me respects and loves and sees that same inside of you, which means that we are always one. Namaste. Make your practice a living yoga practice. Um, hope to see you guys soon. Catch it on the replay. We'll be doing a live uh, Yoga to Excel this evening, our Kirti yoga class but it is going to be uh, a Zoom class. So uh, let me know, send me a message if you're interested in doing uh, that class, but it's not gonna be on display for others. Thank you all so much. Namaste.